Hey guys, as you can see, we got two Segway Snarlers here, 570s. These are the gas models. In the future, they'll also be coming in a hybrid. Pretty cool, I know. I've had the opportunity to get quite a bit of seat time on these Snarlers, all the different models, uh, about five or six different machines. generally positive response. I really like what Segway's brought to the table. They did a really good job, especially when you factor in this is their first ATV to production and, um, and they've done well. Right off the hop, I'm gonna tell you, the suspension, it's great. end models like you're seeing here these aren't the base models you can tell they've got the beadlock wheels these also have upgraded suspension they've got a remote reservoir shock in there you can probably see the suspension on this machine is great it works really well these are very predictable machines the shocks feel good too linear power band about 44 horsepower i believe can't remember what the torque is if you need all the specific details just head on over to the segway power sports website if you're in canada that's segwaypowersports.ca it'll give you all the details and the specs i can't remember them all i'm just telling you how this thing works based on my experience um, obviously i can't test every feature of this thing in the time frame that i've had them but i can tell you off the bat if there was issues i would have found them because i've thrashed on them um, and a handful of guys have thrashed on them, like really hard. Absolutely beautiful. It feels like the wheels are lifting pretty good. These tires hook up so good. Man, you know what? You, you can't lie. Right, right now you can tell I'm pretty like, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty excited. These Snarlers, the 570, I think I'm gonna be adding one to the fleet. Cause uh, it hauls ass. This thing's great, I love it. I, what a blast. We got four kilometers on it now, boys. Yeah, yeah. The Woo! 
together great. Is there issues? There's growing pains with any company. Any company's gonna have issues. What are the issues I've identified? There's really only two, maybe three little issues that I've identified. One of those issues is the belly pans, the skid plates. They're a little flimsy. But I think that's a thing on pretty much every ATV or side-by-side -side hitting the market. Luckily, this, the, the, the aftermarket will take care of that. Yeah, there's gonna be a whole bunch of aftermarket accessories coming. I know there's companies developing like windshields for them already. They've already got cargo boxes for the front and rear in the works. There's gonna be a lot, lot of goodies coming for them. Positives, like I said, the suspension. The suspension is great. The handling characteristics of this machine are good. It's very predictable. These trails are great for these machines. This is what these machines are made for. It feels really planted on these tires. It doesn't spin. Go ahead, lead the way. You know where you're going. Uh, not really. <laughs> follow, I'll follow you. Get set our video. Whether you're an experienced rider or a novice, it's a lot of fun. The brakes, the brakes work awesome on this thing. That's another benefit. Another downside, base model, the lighting. The halogen lighting on the base model leaves a little bit to be desired, but I mean, realistically, you want a light bar, you slap a light bar on there for pennies these days. This is the AT6 LX. This is like the upgraded model. It comes with upgraded suspension with the rims, the bead locks, and it also has LED lights, which are really nice. Yeah, it's got the racks, it's got front bumper stock, it's got a 3,000 pound winch stock, it comes with a Nerf bar stock, it comes with a rear bumper stock, also works well for a GoPro mount, it comes with a 2 inch receiver stock, it comes with a trailer hookup stock, it's got a double A-arm suspension in the rear, it's got four wheel disc brakes, we got the remote reservoir or like the piggyback shock here too. If you look in there, look at all that space. I'm assuming that space there is for the hybrid setup in the future, because there's a whole lot of empty space in the back of this frame. I'm assuming the hybrid's gonna share a frame with this machine. That would only make sense. This is the two-seater model. They come in a one-seat configuration. It is a proper two-seater. It's got grab handles, a lifted portion on the rear seat for your passenger, as well as foot pegs for the passenger down here, which makes it street legal in a lot of areas. You're not allowed to actually ride double in some provinces here in Canada unless you have a proper like two seat model that's like set up for that. So this is a slightly extended wheelbase from the single seater. How does it feel with two people on that thing? Good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's silky smooth. It really does ride well. And Uh, it's got electronic power steering stock. I believe it's got three different modes you can select from. It, um, it has a locking front differential. Some of the models also have um, a turf mode you can engage and disengage. It's got a nice digital display. It works well. You can dim the display. It's got different settings. It tells you everything you need in there. It's got a little storage container in here that's semi-water type. It's got another storage container in the back, which is actually a decent size. Also has a seal around it, but I mean, I wouldn't put anything precious in there. The front end, we talked about the rear being a double A-arm setup. The front is a double A-arm setup as well. Another little issue I found on a bunch of the models is, and this isn't a Segway issue only. 
I've seen this on other ATVs and side-by-sides. The plastic axle guard or whatever you want to call it gets kind of jammed up under there. And uh, it just rubs on things here. It can rub through the boot eventually. In the aftermarket, you'll buy yourself a nice aluminum one there. Winch works good. Well, I guess we'll test out the winch, eh? It comes with what a lot of people would refer to as like a street legal kit. It comes with mirrors. It comes with turn signals and hazards. All that stuff is factory. It comes with a horn. Um, the rear portion of the seat here is removable, so you can kind of pull that off if you're not riding double. I gotta say, this thing has probably like the most sensitive foot brake on it I have ever felt on an ATV. Usually, um, usually the, the hand lever brake is a lot more grabby, well, a lot more grabby, I mean but you hit the foot brake on this thing and it feels like it wants to do an endo. I remember the first couple times I hit it, I'm like, oh my God, I was used to, I'm used to an ATV having a rear foot brake so you can trail brake. This thing applies all the brakes. Um, it's like some, for lack of, of better comparison, uh, on the Can-Am Renegades, the early models, they had one brake lever that controlled all the brakes, which they got rid of later on because people were complaining. They left, brake lever here is simply an emergency brake. The right brake lever, I believe, is like a 60-40 split, 60 front, 40 rear. And I think the foot pedal must be something similar to that. You don't actually have independent control of your front and rear brakes on this machine, which for my riding style, I would say is a downside. But I've been on this enough now that I'm used to it. You just, you just adapt your riding style. But I would love to see them go to like a two separate levers, one that controls the front brake, one that controls the rear brake, and then whatever they want to do with the foot brake. But I mean, personally, if I'm going to have a foot brake, I'm only really going to use it if it's just my rear brakes. So I can kick it around corners and stuff like that. It's got 14 inch beadlock rims, as you can see. It's got a nice tire on there. I believe they're 27s from the factory. Is that a 27? Let me see, I should know this. I can't see it. So. I'll write the tire size down at the bottom of the video here. That's about it. I, I mean, did I miss a few things? Oh yeah, for sure. But this video isn't an in-depth long-term review. This is my first impressions. They're great. But what you should pay attention to is not me standing around this machine talking, but the action clips we're gonna include in this video. Hopefully that shows you how this machine performs. We've, we've beat on it in all sorts of conditions, a bunch of deep water, a bunch of mud. <laughs>
crazy hill climbs, but some decent climbs. ripped it in the dirt, we've ripped it high speed, we've crawled it, it works really well. I hope you enjoyed that little synopsis of the 570 Snarler. It really is a fun machine and if you get a chance to try one I suggest you take them up on the offer and do. There's no better way to experience a machine and see if it's right for you than by driving it. I always tell people if you're gonna buy a machine especially if you're not experienced and it's your first one or something like that go out for a few rides with people. Try them out. Ride the different machines. Don't just go out and buy your first machine that you like. Make sure you try it out and see if it's right for you. So uh, when your girlfriend says she wants a mud bath, do you go out and buy her a gift card to the spa or do you load up the trailer? Just saying, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. When my girlfriend says she wants a mud bath, this is what she means. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What do you guys do when your girlfriend says she wants to go out tonight? <laughs> For us, it's just load up the trailer and find a mud hole. Yeah. <laughs> Trail, trail queen, baby. Trail queen. I just brewed it. You go out and you get yourself a trail queen. None of those fancy girls. You'll never have fun with them. <laughs> now, before we close up, like I said, there's going to be a hybrid model of this Snarler, but I also heard down the grapevine they're going to be releasing a 1000. Now, if they release a 1000 in this chassis, that's going to be wicked. I can't wait to try that. Um, if it was up to me between a 1000 and a 570, man, I'd always pick a 1000. I love the big bores. Um, that's not to put down the 570. 570s have evolved. What you get out of a 570 these days, I mean, would blow a lot of bigger machines away from, from years gone by. I mean, it's 44 horsepower, fuel injected. It's got loads of jam, it really does. Um, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out some of the other content. We've already got some other Segway content on the channel, some Segway villain stuff. We'll have some content from the Segway Fugelman, their, their um, utility vehicle. and. Um, Full disclosure, I mean, uh, I've known Mark, the CEO of uh, Segway Power Sports, for quite a few years. When he invited me out here to uh, play with these new machines, I couldn't say no. I love trying new equipment. Um, by no means am I like affiliated with Segway or am I pushing the product. I'm just giving you my unbiased review. Um, this is just my opinion on the matter. Uh, do some more research on your own. I mean, I'd always recommend you, you, you research more rather than less uh, when you're buying an expensive product like this. So check out the content on the channel. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. We'll be posting a bunch of pictures of this machine, other machines, behind the scenes stuff from trail rides. And um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out some of our trail riding content. That's our bread and butter. That's what, that's what we love doing the most. Um, I love 
trying new machines. I love doing these test rides and these reviews, but there's nothing more fun than, than going out on the trails and really thrashing these units. And um, so stay tuned to that. Um, yeah, anyways, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Ride safe out there.